Afloat with Henry Morgan. Jeffrey Hunter and the Negro, Hero, escaped successfully from the convict camp in the swamps. But Jeffrey is suddenly stricken down with a dreaded fever, becoming unconscious. Hero carries him to a hiding place which he finds amongst the branches of an old tree. Meanwhile, Kitty, who has complete faith in Jeffrey, waits for him to rescue her. Diaz, knowing of Morgan's immediate departure, deserts from the flying gull. And the next morning, from the hillside, sees to his satisfaction Morgan's ships putting out to sea. And then, to Kitty's horror, he joins Kitty and Dolores in hiding. Two days pass, days in which Hero tries to break the fever which brings Jeffrey so close to death. Days in which Kitty waits in vain for Jeffrey to come, believing at last that he has deserted her. Then comes the evening when Diaz tells her that the ship has arrived to take them to Cuba, and she realizes she is now beyond all aid. The next morning, Jeffrey awakens weak but cured, and insists that Hero take him to the stone hut. But upon reaching there, he finds Kitty has gone and the hut empty. Gone. And I promised Kitty I'd come and rescue her. There was nothing you could do, Miss Jeffrey. You were my sick man. Why, why did I have to be struck down like that? It was that cursed fever. It's the fever that kills most men when they work in the swamps. Well, I... I'd not been able to find those leaves and herbs. You wouldn't be here with me now, Mr. Jeffrey. I would rather have died than have left Kitty down. You couldn't understand here. You don't know what's happened. I only know you had a friend in the hut. I also know you had an enemy. That's why I didn't bring you here. That friend was the woman I saw when we came to this hut that day. She was being held prisoner by two unscrupulous scoundrels, a man, a woman, two Spanish rats. I knew them both. That's all such a madly hero. Even now, I can't work it all out. There are so many gaps. Where where have they gone now? Oh, they've gone back to some Spanish possession. Taking with them that other woman as a slave. No worse than a slave. The other woman who is my friend has been taken to a land where she'll have no friends. Where she'll be utterly helpless and powerless. Where her life will be worse than a living death. And she has gone believing that I... But I failed her. You just listen to me. Now you be mighty sick man. You're very weak. When person's been sick and they's getting better, they's liable to think the most awful things about themselves. Ain't you got no gratitude? You ought to be mighty ashamed of yourself, Master Jeffrey. Here we are still in danger. You're only thinking of your own misery. You ain't got no thoughts for poor old hero, what's done all he can to keep you from the grave. Yes, Hero, you're right. I haven't even said thank you. Why didn't you leave me? You might have been miles away from here now. I didn't want to leave you. You're my friend. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. Nothing else matters. I know you're still a sick man. You have to get rest. Now, I suggest we go inside the hut. No one is here. You can lie down and... Try to get some sleep for the rest of the day. When evening comes, uh, you'll be refreshed. Ain't you forgetting that we go and join Captain Morgan? Henry Morgan. Yes, we we have to get to Port Royal. I was forgetting that. We must get there. Especially now that woman has made her escape and gone off the island. She knows Henry Morgan's plans. I, poor fool, told her. We have to reach Henry Morgan before he sails and warn him that his plans are known by a Spanish spy who has gone back to some Spanish possession. Unless he is warned, he'll be trapped. This expedition that Morgan is going on is the most hazardous one he's ever attempted. Well, there ain't nothing that we can do until nightfall. You must get some rest before we go to Port Royal. What with the sickness and disappointment that you've had, we can't travel in daylight. We'll have to wait until nightfall. Now you come with me inside the hut and I'll make you comfortable. And then when it's dark, you and I'll sneak into Port Royal under cover of night, and we'll find Captain Morgan. Yes. Yes. Hmm? Ah, 
Right, Dolores. I didn't hear you coming. What are you doing up here on the prow of the ship, staring into the darkness? A man is inside to have moments of dreaming. No. And way over there in the darkness, Cuba. Ah, it's good to be returning home, to be going back to my own people. People whom you have betrayed. But for me, you would be returning as a traitor. Many times, and I deem it an organized part of dear little Cuba. Many times I regretted leaving that so lovely island. I never thought that the time would come when I'd be able to return to it. Now all this forgiveness is not Dolores. I am returning home. I have fulfilled all my dreams, all my wishes. I am going back and taking with me the woman I want. I have the promises of risk. And you are going to keep your word, are you not, Dolores? I have promised you a reward, yes. I have promised you safety. What more do you want? I just want to remind you that but for me, you would not have got back the Aztec necklace. I have not got it back. No, yet. No. But you will have it when we read Cuba. While I hold it, I am still assured that you'll keep your promise. Do you trust anybody? No. No, I should I. That's foolish. Yes, I am a very lucky man. Everything I have planned has succeeded, and ahead of me somewhere in the darkness lies Cuba. And also somewhere out there in the darkness is Captain Henry Morgan and his fleet of sheep. Captain Morgan sailing on his last expedition. <laughs> you are sure now that you can trap him? I am certain. I know where he is going and what he is going to do. As soon as I reach Cuba, I will tell my father. Mighty ships of Spain will sail after him. Mighty ships that will trap him and there will be no escape for Captain Morgan. You will see him again, Diaz. He will be brought back alive to Havana. I wish to talk with Captain Morgan again. And when I see him, he shall be in chains, and I shall be wearing the Aztec necklace. He shall know before he dies a thousand deaths that it was I, a mere woman, who trapped him. <laughs> yes, Diaz. I, too, am happy. Master Jeffrey. Master Jeffrey, wake up. Oh, well, what is it here? What's wrong? No, it's all right. There ain't anything wrong. Good heavens, it's dark. You've been sleeping a long while. Look, uh, I brought you some wild fruit. I went out just a little while ago. You ain't had nothing to eat for ever such a long while. You've been asleep for ages, so that'll refresh you. Yes, yes, thanks. I wonder what time it is. The time don't matter. It's been dark mighty long time. I reckon now you'll be strong enough after all that sleep all these long hours to get back to Port Royal. We'll be safe there because all good people be abed now. Oh, yes, Hero, I feel fine. I have to get to Port Royal just as soon as I can. Captain Morgan was preparing to put to sea when I was taken. Must be ready for the trip now. Who knows, he might have been sailing in the morning. We must reach Port Royal before morning. Well, everything is very quiet. You know, while you've been sleeping, I've been listening. And today is the first time I've not heard the baying of the hounds. The search must have gone further afield now. Yes, in the days since we escaped, the authorities must have searched Port Royal too. They won't be looking for us there now. They're probably searching for us out on the plantation, didn't they? Well, I reckon, Master Jeffrey, after you eat up all that fruit I brought you, we should be on our way, because we have to take our time. You're still weak. Oh, no, I'm fine. No, you ain't very strong. We have to be extra careful we don't see no one. It's going to be dangerous going into Port Royal, so we have to allow ourselves plenty of time. You eat that fruit I brought you, and we'll get going. <laughs> Very late. I wish I knew what time it was. Must be well into the hours of early morning. We reached Port Royal, not in the sign of anybody. Wait a minute, Master Jeffrey. Look, just coming round the corner. Down there. Someone carrying a lantern. Yes, I see. Quickly. Uh, get in here. Through these open gates. Stand behind the high fence. Let yes. everybody go past. Three o'clock in the morning. A fine night and all is well. It's the watch. If he sees us, he'll raise the alarm. Keep quiet. He's, he's coming closer. What bad luck this is. Around the next corner, we'll be right at the docks. He ain't likely to look behind this wall. We're here for a funny morning. All is well. He's passing. He ain't stopping. Shh, keep quiet. It'll be an hour before he comes this way again. Now, as soon as he's gone, don't run towards the docks. Just walk casually. Footsteps on pathway attract attention. 
These footsteps have faded right away now. Try to say, Mr. Cornell. All right, too fast, Carol. Nearing our journey's end, it'll be dreadful to be caught now. You say the dock's just around the corner? That's right. When we turn the end of this building, you'll see the flying car lying at a berth. Only a few steps more. That... Carol, look. Oh, no, not this appointment again. Just Keyside sure am empty. He's gone. Henry Morgan's gone. Once again, I'm too late. It's sure going to look mighty bad for us. We have to take a risk. There's only one thing to do. What's that? We have got to go to the governor of Jamaica. But we as escaped convicts. For the sake of Captain Morgan, all these men aboard his ships, we have to forget our own safety and go and tell Sir Thomas Mutford what we know. Look at the time, Sir Thomas. Four o'clock in the morning. I'm not used to this sitting up all night and talking. Well, you return to England tomorrow, Colonel. It's the last opportunity of having a little chat with you. But before you go, let's go into my study and have a final nightcap. You know, I hate going back to England and not knowing the fate of Antoinette de Lacey. Yes. What is me, you too. I try not to think of it. Don't go in, Sir Thomas. Eh? There's an intruder in the room. Look over there where the curtains hang in the window. They're bulging out. Man hiding there. Put that pistol down there. Whoever is there is there for no good purpose. A shot is fired. The curtains part and the Negro falls to the floor, revealing standing behind him, Jeffrey Hunter. Fear of the encounter between Hunter and Sir Thomas Mutford in the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Mm-hmm.